Thanks for listening to the Lakers Fast Break Podcast, part of the Hoop Heads Podcast Network. Check out all their awesome basketball shows today at hoopheadspod.com. for another episode of the Lakers Fast Break Podcast. It's Gerald Glassford coming right back at you here at Lakers Fast Break. Pop Culture Cosmos, Inside Sports Fantasy Football, and Game Source. We truly appreciate everyone out there listening to all of our shows. And if you can, please give us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Plus, if you can like, share, subscribe, follow, or do anything that you can to support us right here at the Lakers Fast Break. Lakerholics.com where it's the best place to go for all the conversations that you'd like to have on the Los Angeles Lakers. Or also as well, you need to check out the great shows that are available right now at hoopheadspod.com and the Hoopheads Podcast Network. If you can go ahead and support all these great things, it is sincerely appreciated. Well, I know Laker Tom had said he was very optimistic going into Miami. But I don't think he really would know ahead of time how many players would show up in Miami for the game against Miami. But the Lakers went in there, short LeBron and AD, that we knew. But we didn't know until today that THT, Taylor Horton Tucker, would be suspended for his actions during the scuffle that also took some money out of the pocket of Montrez Harrell against Toronto. Well, THG, I guess, did a little bit too much, so he was suspended. And Kyle Kuzma was also a late scratch. So that left the Lakers without four key players in a rotation. Thought easy victory all the way for Miami. Well, the Lakers, in an admirable performance, were in the game all the way. Actually led for a time as well. They were very competitive. And you know what? They almost won, but not quite, as they lost to Miami, 110-104. to And here today are two great guests I've got on right now. Just a great part of the Lakerholics.com experience. First up is the mastermind, indeed, of Lakerholics.com. It is, of course, Laker Tom. And Laker Tom, you've got to be somewhat happy about the performance. I mean, you weren't expecting after Kyle Kuzma, THT, LeBron, and AD all out of the game to stay close with Miami, especially with Jimmy Butler doing as well as he was doing? Well, I don't know. I've, I've, I've never feared Miami. I, I didn't consider them to be a real threat. And I felt that this was a winnable game when we started off, even without THT and Kuzma. And frankly, it was a winnable game. I think that there are some good signs that we saw in this game. It was great to see Caldwell Pope really break out of his shooting slump and really come out aggressively looking for his shot. I think he heard Laker Tom all the way over from one coast. He heard (laughs) it all the way over to the other coast. All these weeks, all these games, he shot lights out. And you know what? You got to give him credit for finally doing so. No, it was great to see Kenny have a good game. Um, I thought there were some good signs from, from Andre Drummond. I thought he played well. I thought that Markeith Morris played very well, had some excellent defensive plays. He's really always been for the Lakers mostly a three-point shooter, but now he's really added a mid-range shot where he's posting up guys and he's hitting that shot very regularly. The huge disappointment for me and the reason we lost the game, despite his 14 assists, was Dennis Schroeder not being able to take care of the ball, making silly, stupid turnovers, blowing layup after layup, shooting 214. Yeah, um, that's not the way that you're going to earn a job, and that's not the way you're going to earn a twenty million dollar a year contract. Not from the Lakers, that's for sure. So that was disappointing, and it's the same old story over and over. Careless with the basketball, and you just can't have that happen. You know, when a game when you a game that is a winnable game, every one of those lost opportunities to score, they got thirty three points off of those t- twenty two turnovers that we had. Yeah. They outscored us 
basically won the game on points off of turnovers. So that was disappointing. Despite the good signs, I still think the Lakers are only two games out of being able to tie the uh, tie the Clippers and the and the Nuggets for uh, that third spot in the in the playoffs, in the third seed in the West Western Conference. And I think that's a critical place for the Lakers to go. You get that third seed, and you force the fourth and fifth seeds to play each other, which means that the Clippers and Nuggets would have a rematch from last year, but in the first round, not the second round like last year. And the Lakers would avoid having to play the Jazz until the end or the Suns, whoever finishes first. So not a disastrous situation. Uh, It was good that the team performed well. There was some good times at defense and so forth. The fouling in the first quarter and the third quarter were just the downfall for the team. They came back in the second quarter and played pretty good defense and didn't foul at all. And they have eventually made up the big deficit that they had at the free throw line. So there's some good things to be positive about. I'm still pretty confident that if if AD can get back on the 15th or 17th, like what they're talking about, I mean, if LeBron can get back by the end of the month, I still think we have a real good chance to maybe get on a winning streak and pull out the third seed in, in the playoffs. Uh, I think we're for sure not going to fall down into – into the play-in tournament at this point in time. I think that's enough good news coming. Um, and it looks like we are going to have fans in the stands beginning with the, when we get back from this road trip. So some good things, some bad things. The big problem this team has is the same big problem they had last year. They don't have a starting point guard for the future. They don't have a starting center for the future. And this rent a point guard and rent a center type of strategy that Rob Palenka seems to have adopted and failure to get three-point shooters is is something that's really making us having to work uphill all the time. Well, let me ask you this. Did Morris, because they lost their composure. I think that was the key. They lost composure in the back half of the fourth quarter. I think that's where they lost the game. Uh, of course, they lost the game there, but they lost their composure. I think that was the, what the key it, it was. And like you said, with Schroeder just shooting two for 14, having a miserable game and a lot of turnovers, I think, again, it comes down to composure. Did Morris get thrown out? I'm not. He I'm, got thrown out. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Because yeah. uh, there was a key play as it came. Yeah, he, thought he, was, he thought he was fouled and uh, <laughs> and basically went after the riff. And yeah, I, I thought he got him again. Tests. And uh, yeah. that was a pretty easy call to to do it, you know. It's just a frustrating game because, like I said, it was a winnable game, Gerald. Yep. I mean, the Heat don't scare me in any sense and form. You know, the Lakers can beat them just like they did in the finals. And here, here even without four key players, they they basically should have beat them. Yeah. So, you know, it, let's take that from the good bye. Yeah, and I, I always hate these moral victories because at the end of the day, those moral victories don't count for anything in the standings. No, unless we're um, playing and- horseshoes. Yeah, close only counts in horseshoes, right? I'm glad to see Kenny come out aggressively and play. But it's the same old story that I've been harping on for the last three or four games, which is when we're playing a team that's that we feel like it's a winnable game, where we feel like they don't have a superstar that we can't stop, then we go out there and we we play aggressively. We shoot with confidence. We really we really play pretty well most of the time. But when you're shorthanded like that, you need everybody to play well. And if one of your key cogs being the only point guard you got on the team at this point in time without THT being there, because Caruso is really not a point guard or distributor, uh, THT really hurt us in that sense because, and and you're playing a team that really doesn't have a dominant big man in the game. Those are winnable games for us. If we're not, if we're not outsized at the center position and we're not playing against superstars, those are the games that we have to win if we want to end up with a third seed. Also here for today's show is a good man indeed. You got to catch whenever he makes those great comments that he does at Lakerholics.com. It is L Rob and L Rob. I understand moral victories don't really matter for the Lakers, but again, I think right now they, they incorporated Ben McLemore. He, you know, he didn't do a whole lot, obviously his first game with, with the team, not expecting a whole lot, but it was nice to see him get some action in there. I know Jay John Sarceta, one of our greatest fans, knew that he was going to be in, so I'm glad to see that that came true for him. Andre Drummond, in his first real action since getting hurt with the toe injury, 15 points, 12 rebounds, two steals, 
not too many turnovers, three assists, three turnovers. That's a wash for a player like that. That's that's not too bad. We'll take it. Marcus Saul he didn't get in the game. I think he's probably a little bit upset being, you know, on the shelf. But what can you say with Andre Drummond getting 15-11? KCP, like Tom was saying, great game, 28 points. Still, moral victories don't really matter much for the Lakers, but you still got to be pleased that the Lakers just didn't roll over and die, seeing that four players in their rotation were not in the game. That is true. That's all you want to do is you want to see some fight. So that much they showed fight. Uh, I thought Drummond played okay. You can tell he's out of shape a little bit. You can tell his timing isn't just right. You see him miss time uh, a few rebounds. Maybe Dennis has a decent game if he doesn't take away the one shot he does hit at the beginning of the game by sticking his hand in the rim. I mean, guy hits that first three, and who knows? He may, you know, he may feel good about himself and have a decent game. Well, you take that one and the one that the one that they got where where the where uh, was it? Somebody threw a pass to somebody, a, a lob pass, yeah. and went in, yeah. and the guy grabs the rim. Yeah. I mean, that was. Uh, you know, I hate to talk about the referees, but that was just a poorly refereed game. It was yeah. like, you know, you're blowing your whistle every second in the first quarter, and then it was 18 just 18 free throws game. in the quarter for them. <laughs> yeah, 18 free throws in the first quarter. Uh, I wasn't as satisfied with the, the refereeing. So, I mean, and, and really, Dennis goes to the basket a lot. And, boy, they make the perfect plays on him because he never gets a call. I mean, today he, he didn't get a call in the first quarter. Where every time, you know, Ariza goes in there and throws his body into Drummond. Drummond's straight up and down. He shoots free throws. Dennis goes to the rack, and he doesn't get free throws. So, I mean, I was frustrated with that. Still, no excuse for all the turnovers. You do not deserve to win when you, you know, have as many turnovers as the Lakers had. But like Tom said, that game was a winnable game if they take away the turnovers. But the Lakers, you know, when you when you are the one guy, you got to create something so much and, and like uh, that like they're relying on Dennis to do these days, you're gonna have turnovers. Yeah. You know, maybe four, five in that type of game where you're getting 14, 15 assists as I can see, but when you get seven and it's the type of turnover, some of them, I mean a couple of them, you know, like Kenny should have been in the corner. Um McKinney should have been in the corner instead of crashing down. I mean a couple of them wasn't his fault, but it's um, still just a two to one ratio for because you, you know, know fourteen assists. You look at that and you say, "Yeah, it's great," but the seven turnovers that yeah. really sticks out as well. You know and, all and of that is, is average. It's better than his okay turnover ratio. All of that is okay if you don't go two for whatever he went. You know, even yeah. with the seven turnovers, two for twelve. Make, yeah, if you shoot, you know, forty five percent from the field, then I mean, then, LeBron's the all time leader in turnovers. So there yeah, you I mean, go. Yeah, I mean, Magic led the league in turnovers. So when you're handling the ball, you're gonna have a lot of turnovers. Yeah. Um, so, but you know, it was a decent game. It was, you know, it was frustrating. They played better, but it's still frustrating when you lose because, like Tom said, the Heat doesn't scare anybody. Um, Old Depot, I know, you know, people wanted him. Oh. I, I, you know. He's a good player, that's but scary. Like, that's scary seeing him hurt that same knee coming down like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I hate, I hate. Um, to see no word on his status. I was just checking Twitter on, mm-hmm. on his status as yet, other than he was going to be out of the game, however long for he was going to be out. But he was not going to return. But yeah, it doesn't look like it's going to be something that <laughs> he's uh, got atrophy in one of those yeah. legs in that yeah, knee, so in that one leg, and so it did got, look pretty. It did look pretty. That's, I don't I think it was that. on the land. I don't think it was on when he landed. I think yeah, it was when he took off. off. He took yeah. off. I think so, too. Yeah. yeah. I he think he's got great hands on defense. He's thrown the ball like four or five times from Laker players. I've always loved Victor. And I was one of the people basically that wanted the Lakers to trade for him. So, obviously, hopefully, they, they knew something <laughs> about his medical condition that, that fans didn't know or that fans didn't want to believe. L. Rob is already shaking his head. No, <laughs> you said that, but L. Rob, you wanted to say something. Go ahead, my friend. <laughs> yes, carry on KCP's uh, hot shooting. I think having Drummond, you know, they played together about uh, I think four years here in Detroit. So I think you don't you that, don't think it had anything to do with uh, Ben being brought aboard? No, no, no. And that's oh, something I, I hope on, to see more. Come on, Lee. I, I mean, I, you. Hey, if Macklemore gets hot and can can give us a couple games, that would be great. I've never I been thought a Kenny, I thought right. Kenny was failing to shoot because he didn't want to lower that percentage below 40%. Ben has been uh, a memory of his has been firmly entrenched in my mind when I was watching him play. 
this last uh, year at Kansas, and I think they're up like 90 seconds. They're up. You know, all they had to do was meal clock. They win. He comes down. He cranks up a three-point shot. He misses. I think uh, you know, Michigan went on an eight-nothing run or something to close out, force overtime. And I was like, why? Why did you shoot that? So I've never been. I, I heard um, I heard Magic Man talking about how he's a coach's son, a high IQ player. I've never seen it. He's a good shooter. So he can shoot the ball, but he's just not a smart player, I don't think. But when you're playing with LeBron, if LeBron can set you up and all you got to do is you don't have to do much but shoot the ball, then I, I mean, yeah, I mean, he can give us something. He's a, he's a good shooter. He's a, he's a proven shooter, so that much I like. But if he, just makes, if he just makes Kenny aggressive, I think that's worth it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think he the drama was- effect helped Kenny, though. I think that helped KCP feeling comfortable seeing his big well, look guy. At, look at Gasol's game. The Gasol's game after we had got Drummond, Gasol's game improved 100%. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Nothing like some looking at that bench and seeing somebody. But yeah. I mean, he's, he's no threat to replace KCP and KCP because he can't play defense like them. And he, you know, if he shoots like this and Drummond gives you good effort, I mean, you can. No, that's the biggest. Uh, it's a big thing from big big yeah, thing for Kenny to shoot like that. Yeah, if he shoots like tonight, I mean, come on. That, that's Lakers, like the playoff. You know, that's like the playoff playoff Kenny. Yeah. This is Raphael from NBADraftJunkies.com, and you are listening to the Lakers Fast Break. Hey, hoop heads. We all hate ankle sprains, and they happen way too often. Ankle injuries are the number one sports-related injury. Arise is trying to change that. With the iFast, your athletes get preventative protection and full mobility. Athletes no longer need to wear bulky braces that limit performance and give mediocre protection. Anyone playing sports should be using these products. Keep your athletes in the game. Don't wait for them to get hurt to take action. Visit www.arise.com. Spelled A-R-Y-S-E. And use the code HOOPHEADS to get 20% off the future of performance. That's A-R-Y-S-E dot com with promo code HOOPHEADS to get 20% off. Well, I'll tell you what, there's uh, still more to talk about on today's program. But again, the Lakers did unfortunately come up a little short. We Depot, kind of glad now that we did get Victor Oladipo, seeing how he's already injured again. Uh, just after obtaining him from the Houston Rockets, the Miami Heat. So it's already see that happen. Well, hopefully it's a minor injury at best. So we're hoping for some good health for him because, you know, he needs it. Obviously coming up on a free agent payday or if not, if he gets hurt. But with the Lakers, again, Ben McLemore played his first few minutes. Obviously, you couldn't get much out of the 17 minutes that he did play. Didn't shoot well from the three-point area. Did get some free throws in, six points. Nothing really to take from it other than the fact that we got to get him some more time, which he may do when we head to Brooklyn on Saturday because of the fact that you know they're going to need all the firepower that they can get to match up with Kevin Durant, who's back in the lineup. I'm assuming that two of the three is going to play at least. So before we head on out, guys, and before you're telling us what we're doing, and also a major announcement that I want to make for the Lakers coming up in May that we'll talk about here in a minute. But for Laker Tom, I want to go ahead and talk about what do they need to do to sneak out a surprise victory on Saturday against the Brooklyn Nets? Don't come out afraid. That's the whole thing. You, You just can't come out intimidated. You come out intimidated and turn the ball over four or five times in the first two minutes, three minutes of the game, like they did against the Clippers, they're going to find themselves down 30. It's that simple. You got to come out and play like you can win the game. And if you don't believe you can win the game, you aren't going to win the game. I mean, you can't outscore them. So it'll be about out muscling them. So maybe Drummond, you know, he's got a game under his belt. Um, he plays well against teams where he feel he's the biggest, baddest dude on the court. So maybe he can come out and, you know, muscle him and, and kind of give dominate the boards and, and play that kind of game. But it's a very, very, very tall order with Durant being back. Guys, Clippers made a signing of someone that Laker Tom wanted very much, actually it was one of the only times that Jamie Sweet and Laker Tom agree on something is that they wanted <laughs> DeMarcus Cousins to be on the team. 
Had a and, good game. First good game, too. Yeah, first good game. And I want to hear your thoughts. Are you thinking more now about that being a mistake for the Lakers and not signing DeMarcus Cousins? I've always felt that the the big thing that Boogie could do that Drummond can't do is, spread, is stretch the And Boogie, people don't remember that before DeMarcus got hurt in that last year with the Pelicans, he was on pace to shoot over 500 threes for the season, which would have been the first time a center did that. The very next year, Brooke Lopez did that and was such a major factor. So I've been screaming for volume three-point shooters, and Boogie could have been that for the Lakers, I think. Unfortunately, now he's going to be that for the Clippers, which is not good for the Lakers, because that's the one thing he can do for the Clippers even much better than Ibaka does. And and the word that I'm hearing from the Clippers camp is that despite Zubak playing extremely well, Ty Lue likes the five out sets that he gets with uh, Ibaka at center. And uh, Boogie's going to fit right in with that. Well, he's not fitting out well with them yet because he's not played in the uh, game against Phoenix so far. So mm-hmm. it's still going to take some time for him to work himself into the rotation. Yeah. But L. Rob. After seeing his first game as a Clipper, do you think that might have been a little bit of a mistake by Rob Palenka not to get him instead of Andre Drummond? Absolutely not. No. Because you're the one who's had the most extensive knowledge of Andre Drummond, and and we had a conversation before on that. Yep, I know. Um, I mean, uh, Boogie, I mean, he was on Golden State. He was on the perfect team, and he, I mean, he really looked bad, and even – you know, when he came back from that injury when, with the Warriors going for a championship, I think he had one game where you felt like, okay, you're helping us, but he was more of a liability. So he's going to give up a lot more than he's going to get. He won't play much with the Clippers, and it's going to hurt them. They got too many guys that wants to play. There's no way he's going to play enough to even make an impact. So, no. The last thing we needed is a guy who can't move on defense, and um, he's really not a great post player. He's a three-point shooter now. Yeah, I mean, so kind of like Marcus All. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we didn't we didn't need another yeah, one. Yeah, he's a good passer, like Gasol is, but again, he's yeah. he, you know it leaves right that the I think it's pretty obvious that the reason that when you look at all of these situations of players that the Lakers sign versus players that they don't sign, the one thing that always stands out as the key decision point is defense. If they can't play defense, first off, Frank's not going to play him. <laughs> so so why in the world would Rob want to sign somebody that Frank's not going to play? And that's what it comes down to with the Lakers. And, and you know, you got to respect the fact that this, this team without LeBron and AD still has a number two ranked defense and ahead of the Knicks by like three points per game. So... The problem is, is that that defense is great when you're playing teams that don't have superstars. But without our superstars to be able to cancel out the other team's superstars, that's why it's a tough matchup. When well, they all, I think the one thing outside of Schroeder not doing well, the other major factor is, what, is Butler going to the line so much. Butler went up to the line 11 out of 12. Had he not gone to the line so much and the Lakers maybe played without fouling as much, I think they probably could have got sneaked away with the win a lot easier. Yeah, but that's they? that's Jimmy's game though. Jimmy's yeah, game I, is I know. a smart game, you know. Yeah. He's he he knows how to get that contact. Yeah. That's something that Dennis doesn't really Dennis's idea of being able to draw a foul is to fall down on his back after every layup attempt. Rather than jumping into the guy and you know and getting the contact so that the rep is forced to call those fouls. Um, yeah, and, and, you know, it's easier for a guy like Jimmy to do it than obviously it is for a skinny guy like like Dennis to do it, you know. But Dennis yeah. Dennis, played, Dennis had some great defensive efforts in the game, you know. And it's, it's heartbreaking in a way for me to watch him because I see so many things that I love about his game, you know. His, his pounding players on defense, that sort of attack dog mentality, his quickness and speed to get to the rim and to beat people on easy layups. But then it's the blown layups and the turnovers that just, you know, and, and the failure to shoot consistently from deep last year was obviously an outlier when he hit 38% because he's never done that in his other years in the, in the league and so forth. So, and then, and then there's the, 
then there's the point that because we didn't trade him, do we overpay him to keep him or do we just lose him for nothing? Well, we'll wait and see on that one. L. Rob, I know you wanted to chime in. Go ahead, yeah. my friend. No, I was just, I mean, A, you can't expect the Lakers to beat these upper echelon teams without LeBron and AD. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, I mean, we just want them to be competitive like they were today. I, and they are well, playing. that's the thing. Can they be competitive? Yeah, man. And Dennis, you know what, Dennis, you know, he's learning a new role. So I'm not going to be as hard on, on him as, uh, as time is. You know, I have no problems. He's a good finisher. So games like today is an outlier to me. I mean, he's usually a good finisher. Uh, outside shots a little shaky, but he, his game is quickness, using his quickness to go to the basket. So, I mean, that that, that much we don't have to worry about. But he's, he's trying to feel, figure out a new role where he's trying to lead this team without, you know, these guys in there. So far, it's been a mixed bag, but, you know, he's given good effort. Um, just got to make a little bit better decision making and, and then we'll be okay. So I think all of this is good learning experience from that will help us down the road. We're signaling the ref for a quick timeout, but we'll be back with more of the Lakers Fast Break Podcast. Check out what's been going on with the Pop Culture Cosmo Show and the PCC Multiverse. The better that these Marvel films do, the higher the standards are going to be for not just other films in general, but other Marvel films also. I think it's really hard to end a show with this many fans in a satisfying way. That's the Pop Culture Cosmo Show. And the PCC Multiverse. Playing worldwide on radio seven days a week and wherever you get your podcasts. Well, hopefully they will have a great learning experience on Saturday in a primetime ABC game coming up. We will be here after that game, hopefully in good spirits and talking about Lakers win, possibly stealing the game at Brooklyn. You know, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. But before we hand on out, I know El Rob is a, a good man indeed when it comes to Lakerholics.com. And you got to go ahead and check out anything that he goes and comments on when he's there at Lakerholics.com. But Laker Tom, I know you got some stuff as well that you're working on. There's some great articles coming up. What's planned for you and everyone else when it comes to Lakerholics.com? Well, I'm spending some time just trying to figure out exactly where the Lakers can end up. I'm actually pretty optimistic about their opportunities. If if we could get AD back, let's say no later than the 17th, and if we get LeBron back at the end of the year, um, that would still leave us nine games with both of them five games with uh, AD and then, uh, you know, and then nine with both of those guys. And the key to me is being able to win the number three seed and get that position going into the playoffs. And I know we're going to talk about Jeannie's announcement and, and so forth. Um, and and uh, having fans in the stands, you know, it's kind of interesting. The, the Golden State Warriors are actually requiring either a proof of vaccination or passing a test. And they're actually sending out to anybody who signs up a week ahead of time a free test to be able to take within 48 hours to prove that that you don't have COVID so that you can go to the game so that everybody can actually go into the game and feel safe. And, and uh, in Northern California, uh, San, San Francisco County has approved 35% people attending that. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with the Lakers. I've gotten a lot more optimistic. I think we saw some good signs in the game today. One of the one last little comment on Dennis is that one of the problems Dennis is having, like tonight, in closing in at attacking the basket, is teams just don't respect our three point shooting, and so everybody's clogging the lane. and And he's going in there. There's always two or three guys that are that are in the paint, and so it's it's not like when you beat one guy and the paint is suddenly empty because the other team is all guarding everybody on the perimeter it's it's not so he's he has only one lane basically to go in there and go and that's one of the reasons why he's missing layups and one of the reasons why some of those shots are getting blocked why they're difficult shots it's all tied to three-point shooting we have to hit shots if we hit shots that opens things up if you don't hit shots it's very hard to drive and and it's not just dennis it's hard to drive for LeBron. It's hard to drive for AD. It's hard to drive for KCP or anybody on the team. The game today is is basically ability to penetrate. You've got a it's a drive and dish game, man. Setting up three point shots, the three point shots set up the drive, and then the drive and dish sets up the three point shots. 
and we don't play that game very well. We'll see what happens on Saturday with the Brooklyn Nets. But before we head on out, my friends, I want to go ahead and let everyone know out there, our wonderful viewers and listeners, that the Lakers will be unveiling their 2020 championship banner. But, yes, it was announced the team, like you said, Jeannie Buss, in an official statement, they are going to unveil the franchise's 17th title. Hopefully an 18th will be in order so we can be one ahead of the Boston Celtics. But that's, uh, you know, a little presumptuous for now, maybe. But we'll see. The Lakers will be unveiling their 17th title banner on May the 12th. So May the 12th is the date. If you're in and around Los Angeles, you want to go ahead and check out the Staples Center. That's It'll the be an expensive place. ticket. <laughs> It'll be an expensive ticket. But you know what? You Hopefully you've been saving money now for over a year and a half to go ahead and check it out. <laughs> We'll see what happens, but yes, that'll be a great day for all Lakers fans as the championship banner is unveiled. And you know we will be here at the Lakers Fast Break applauding that day. But L. Rob, before we head on out, I want to hear your thoughts on May 12th being a great day for the organization and the team and all of its fans when the Lakers unveil their 17th championship banner. Boy, May 12th is a game against the Rockets. Okay, I guess you want to make sure you have a, a good a You want a winning game, game man. Yeah, that, that sets up pretty nicely. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's you know it's, they really haven't had a chance to really celebrate that that uh, banner and all the hard work. I don't think appropriately. So that'll be a great night. I mean, that'll be a great night. That was not uh, an easy task when you think about LeBron when he first signed, and then the young guys. We got LeBron C plus effort. You start questioning things. Uh, what's we gonna get AD? You get AD, and then uh, LeBron ramped it up and showed why he's one of the you know top two, three you know players that ever lace them up. So that was a very, very special year, and we shouldn't take it for granted. So yes, I'm looking forward to celebrating that night and you know one of the, the year. Well, you know one of the things, L. Rob, if out there, if you're a listener, go and check out the podcast from in and around the bubble days especially the games before the playoffs started when they were really looking bad, when everybody was singing gloom and doom about the Lakers. And, you know, we here at the Lakers fast break weren't any different. Although again, people were asking me and I was going on different interview places, different shows, and I was still being asked who I thought to win. I still thought the Lakers would win, but man, it was pretty shaky at that point in time because the team was like really in a bad way, but Laker Tom, they did come through with it. It was a great day for all of us as Lakers fans when they won their championship, tying the Boston Celtics, so we don't have to hear it for now from anyone in Boston. Of course, Bill Simmons says we still, you know, blah, 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 asterisks and all that. But I want to go ahead and ask you this before we end on out, and that's your thoughts on May the 12th being a great day for the team and its fans. Yeah, you know, the, the biggest shame of the whole thing is that we missed an opportunity to have a parade, man. And I don't know how they fit a parade into it. You know, you sort of, that's sort of like a lost thing. And now they'll at least be able to hopefully go visit a president. They can, yeah, they hopefully can go visit. And actually, it's good that that got postponed so that nobody wanted to go visit Trump. So at yeah. least they can go visit Biden. But no, I think that, I think this makes the hanging of the championship banner. I think we're going to see a lot of people outside of Staples too. I think we'll see that that's going to be the equivalent of, a combination of the parade and putting the banner up because you just can't really have the parade at this, this, this yeah. far along. It just doesn't work. It wouldn't, the banner could be a great thing. And then hopefully, you know, California's got the lowest COVID uh, rate of infection right now of all of the States. So hopefully let's keep our fingers crossed and hope that we don't have a whole lot of people coming from New York and Florida places where, the, and where they to get a resurgence, you oh, know. And Michigan. Can, yeah, Rob yeah, got yeah, that. Michigan, or Michigan, Jesus, Lee. Michigan, too. You or know, or so. Texas, where they go to, uh, you know, they yeah. have full capacity on their Texas Rangers. Oh, games. the Texas Rangers, man. I can't believe that. Don't even I get can. me started on baseball. The Yankees have lost two games because of the putting runners on second base at the start of the 10th inning. You know, I, I don't know. I don't want to go in baseball. That's another outcome. It's sort of like, why don't we in the NBA for for when a, when there's an overtime game, just have a free throw shooting contest at each end? You know, you shoot one, we shoot one. First team that misses, you're out. Yeah. Such a silly concept. 
But anyway, May 12th, I think May 12th will be the equivalent of the parade and the hanging the banner and a chance to celebrate. And because it's the Rockets, we're going to win the game too. You, you know, they're always bad on when they get the ring center ceremony. No, so not this time. Not this time, Gerald. Not this time. Ho- hopefully not. Hopefully just stop it. Just well, stop I'm, not, it. I'm just telling mm-hmm. you, well, this is not stop a ring it. ceremony. This is a banner unveiling. Usually one go and goes hand in hand. So this is kind of different that yeah. they've already gotten the rings, but now they have, they're going to get their banners. So hopefully they will not follow that tradition like all these teams do. It's not just the Lakers. It's all these teams. They have that buzz and the euphoria. But now that's so later in the season, I think it'll be okay. And you're right. They should go ahead and take care handily the Houston Rockets. We'll be on a fight for the number three spot by then. Watch Jamie Sweet, though, throw a trap out on us. So we'll see what happens. But, again, it is the Lakers Fast Break. If you have any questions for us, Lakers Fast Break at Yahoo.com or at Lakers Fast Break on Twitter, at Laker Tom on Twitter, you got to go ahead and check out what he's doing on Medium at medium.com. He's got a great article there always waiting for you to read. And, of course, everything that we're doing at Lakerholics.com. Well, guys, once again, a great effort by the team, but falling just short, 110-104 to the Miami Heat. Prime time on Saturday. It's on ABC for everyone out there. It's going to be at Brooklyn. Oh, this is the matchup that – we're hoping for but not quite expecting the way it happens so i won't actually see or get a kind of good feel for it but could this be an nba finals preview we'll wait and see but it is going to be us after that game against brooklyn so we'll be here saturday night with you right here at the lakers fast break podcast